drop your comment. Any special guest? We'll have a special guest a little bit later. Her name is uh, Baisa Kamasian, and she's gonna be talking about the billion dollar bond uh, for construction, permanent supported housing for critically homeless individuals, but she won't be here until later. So we can go on and get the approval of the uh, board minutes. Green paper. Yeah, so we're just we're just going over. So December, uh, this closes out the year for last year. Everything was um, pretty much what we expected. Um, security came in a little bit over budget. You'll see it was at eight hundred and five thousand. Part of that was um, we had forgotten in our budgeting to put in some space for our um, SFW and also. Oh, sorry, what? Yeah, one's gonna check. Um, we had uh, some additional costs with the software that we use, and then also we started our maintenance program for the camera that we have. So because we had a one-year warranty, remember where it covers it from the install, and then it expired. So we had to pay a couple months of the camera maintenance, and that's why we went over a little bit there. Other than that, everything else was good. We ended the year with 160,000 roughly in rollover, which is great. Um, that gives us a nice little cushion for the remaining three years of the bid to use that and spread that out. Um, so that was for 2015. Uh, the next page is just our internal spreadsheet. This is the, uh, the larger one here, the legal size paper. And this one just is our internal one that we use to kind of show uh, specifically in each budget category how we did. This is tied to the general ledger that Jose, who's our accountant, keeps. Um, and as you can see, uh, we're pretty much under budget in every category with the exception of security, as I mentioned. Um, at the bottom there, uh, where it says B2 in the little green box, um, that just shows um, the year-end projected cash. So we ended right at 163.11. Uh, we took about $65,000 to roll over into this year's budget um, to build our budget for 2016, which leaves us about $95,000, um, again, to finish off our last two years on the bid. So if you split that over, that's about 42,000, 43,000 that we have for each year for 2017 and 2018. Correct, plus any additional savings we have from 2016, this year's operations. And also our delinquencies will hopefully get a little bit better, which I'll, I'll go over with you in a minute. And um, we're showing some promise there with the exception of, of course, LUSD. So, so since I'm new to this bit, I just have a question. On, in terms of our larger contracts, here the um, maintenance? Yeah, maintenance. When do those, do we, do we vet those contracts annually? They're not annually, they're actually, they're bid out fairly regularly. We just had a RFP for both of those. They're coming up in 2018 for bid again. Okay, well, what is fairly regularly? I would say probably every 45, 45 years. years. 45 yeah. years, yeah. yeah. We, um, <laughs> we did it for a, maintenance uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. and security was probably the, the year before that. Yeah. Because <coughs> our contracts go for that long, so that we don't do it until the contracts come up. Right, okay. And you have to return to how many companies? It depends. I mean, we had, I think, eight for security the last time we did security, and I want to say four or five for maintenance. Five, six, I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, no, it's a good question. So, so that's uh, so that's 2015, and then the next is 2016, and this will actually go over January and February um, because the January statements were not available at the last board meeting, so we'll, we'll take that into account with the vote today. But um, property assessments, you'll see that um, in column one under January, we rolled over that 65,000 that I talked about. Um, we got about half of our assessments, or excuse me, about a third of our assessments in in February, which is great. Um, we're expecting to get some more here soon. So that was that was really good. Uh, everything else pretty much on par. Security's been holding steady. Steve's really done a great job and continues to do a good job of keeping us within that budget each year. Um, district maintenance is the same. Management contract went up slightly this year, and the reason for that was that we had increased rent with us moving. and. Um, the rent is split on a percentage basis between Hollywood and this bid. And so in order to bring that back into alignment with the new, um, can someone get the front door please? With the new, uh, with the new space, we had to up the management contract. And so um, that's what the increase there is for, is to cover the rent cost with our new office. Um, the other thing is that the city took their fees out in February. So that's, that's done, that's a one-time fee for the year. So that's already been taken out, it's 1% of our assessments. And um, you'll see at the bottom, on the far right under the total column, uh, that the 95000 there is also pretty unallocated, is, is counted for there at the bottom of that, of that page there. Joe, I see in the, in the O15 actual there was receivable and penalty for $1,500, and then there's a consequence there. Does that mean that they're undercovered? And therefore not recoverable, or they just haven't been recovered as yet. Sorry, say that again. What page was it? In in 015, 2015, uh -huh. uh, receivable and penalty, and the upper, the upper left hand corner, five thousand nine hundred sixteen dollars, and then one column over is a variance of that same number. So, is that does that mean you haven't recovered them, um, and can't recover them, or haven't recovered them yet? Five thousand. Sorry, I'm just trying. I'm not seeing where it is. Right it's here. Oh, it's on the big sheet. On the big sheet. Gotcha. Um, five thousand nine sixteen. No, that was actually we we did receive that. The variance was that we weren't expecting to receive it, and we did. So that's what the difference was there. So that's why you haven't forecasted any for this year. Right. Well, we always we always do a delinquency. Uh, we budget for a delinquency each year of about seventy six thousand dollars for this bid. Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the discrepancies that I talked about with Kitty today is that if you look at the twenty fifteen financials on the second page for December, the one that ended in December. You'll show on the second line under property assessments, it shows balance and budget is $71,683. That was the money that we didn't collect last year. Um, on the back side of your 2016 financials, sorry, there's a lot of pages here, but this one looks like this. It was on the back of uh, the 2016. If you take the two last columns, which was our last year's of assessments for private and government parcels, that number of grant adds up to about 68000 almost $69,000. There's a $2,000 differential there that I'm trying to figure out what that's from. But um, you, you will see that a majority of that delinquency, again, comes from LAUSD, which has been the case, as you can see, for pretty much every year since our bid renewed. And then there's a little bit of private assessments in there that's accounted for as well. Um, that's that's so to um drew when he was on the hollywood bid board and served as treasurer was very good at helping us tease out what we would consider to be and help me remember what the terminology was a like non-recoverable non uh, assessment versus a likely recoverable right. assessment and the lausd would fall in the category of the unlikely recoverable but it's always been the board's um decision to keep the, a running total of this just so that we don't ever let them off the hook if there's ever any discussion. I'm wondering if just from a, maybe we can ask our accountant from a, from a proper accounting case, if it's, if there's, if it's a legislative policy issue and, and there's any standing from LASD and they, they have a legitimate, whether you agree with it or not, they can just say, we're not subject to that. But it shows up here as as a, as an account payable, mm -hmm. right? 
maybe that becomes a footnote. Because what I don't want is someone to look at these things and say, well, the bid hasn't been doing what they're supposed to be doing. It'll be a footnote on the financial review. Yeah, I want to make sure that it's understood that we're doing what we can do, except for the fact that we can't, you know, unless we choose to litigate it, we're not going to get on that. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, well said. So, those are the financials and the treasurer's report. Um, if there's any additional questions, I can answer those. Well, are we supposed to call Brian? He's not going to be able to call. Okay, okay. All right. So you get a motion for each of the three reports. So we have two reports, and we need to both get approved. So can you take a look? Any questions? Otherwise, we have to vote for it. Uh, for the December 31st statement? This is the uh, December 31st. Uh, motion. Motion. Very good. Uh, second. Yeah. So there's not going to be any discussion. Everybody in favor? Opposed? Same. Pass. And then January. Or actually, it should be February, excuse me. It would be February for the February statements. No. And now we're going to the uh, January 1st, 2016. Make a motion to approve the January February statement. January February statement. Is that a second? Right. Any questions? So, okay. All in favor? Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Opposed. Can we uh, financial review vendor option? Is that also key? Um, yeah, uh, well, it's Kitty and whoever the team. Wants to help with it. And team. Um, so, uh, RBZ uh, is the uh, current um, company that we're working with for our tax returns and financial reviews. Um, their charges last year for the tax return was 2000 for the financial review was $4,200. Um, Fabio Bosco, we received a quote from them, and they're the group that the Hollywood bid uses. Um, they've had a long-standing history. They do great work, uh, and they came in uh, at least a, a, about uh, 2,200 less for doing the same work. So the recommendation is that we uh, go with the Fabio Bosco quote um, to use for our taxes and, and financial review. And it's just an FYI, we're just you know, doing our due diligence just to see. Um, uh, and also our accountant asked us to consider reaching out because I think we had a little bit of a struggle with uh, the tax return last year. So is that something that uh, is going to cost a lot of time? Is it going to be painful? No, we think it'll, it'll, be easy. Be, it'll be easy. It'll be easier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're All just right. recommending, we're just going to change vendors. And, now we move into doing the financial review, um, which is uh, required with the city, and it has to be in by May 1st, I think. So we'll be, and that's where, um, through your comments about footnoted um, uh, explanations of our financial um, issues will be included. Okay. Any question about the uh, vendor, the county vendor? No. Yeah, and that's okay. what I'm Okay, so let's move on. Uh, can we do Stephen? Simon? Can we have the report from Andrew? Sure. Good. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you. I'm just going to kind of skip through the report. But um, at the end of the year, uh, we met with Terry and her staff. Basically, what we wanted to know is what can we do to improve this year? And some of the issues we came up with um, more visibility with our high visibility patrols, bike patrols, foot patrols um, would be desired. Uh, avoiding Mission Creek, which is a constant problem for us because people are always trying to get us to do more. Um, more and more, we have to resist that if we pulled out of uh, what we're supposed to be doing. Um, engaging other area bids, and we started that process, we got sort of hung up with this late night patrol, and it sort of took us off our mission, but we started the first steps of meeting with other bids. And it's topics like for downtown, like abandoned property, very dangerous issues. What is abandoned property? What is trash? We don't want to get involved in hauling away somebody's possessions and all that so that's in the works and, and 
and we're just going to communicate more and uh, see if we can improve ourselves. <clears throat> Problem solving during homeless and other topics, which is what we do every day, we're going to continue that. And um, we want to take as many of you as possible on ride along with us so you can see, you know, a different view of the bid. And so we encourage that and we're ready to kind of set that up anytime you're ready. We're out from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. So we can pretty much accommodate you anytime during the day. To do what? Ride along. We'd like to take you oh. out in our vehicle with the guys. It could be whenever you're available. It could be at noon, call for an hour. It could be 6 a.m. In fact, it wouldn't hurt to see the different times. So we do different things. 6 a.m. is very different than 3 p.m. So we really like to kind of push that with as many of you as possible to get out there and see what we're doing. Um, another thing, proactively seek ways to get businesses to kind of harden the target. Um, look for problems. How can they be more efficient and uh, kind of make it less inviting for crime and things to happen there? And I'm, like I said, I'm going to skip around, but if you go to page two at the top, there's a couple of examples of what I'm talking about with that one. We've already sort of hit the ground running. Uh, remember the owner of Goodwill on Vine, and he was complaining about homeless people on his property every morning. We sent our supervisor there and he pointed out, your gate is broken. You're making it very inviting for people to come in here. He was like flabbergasted. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. He vowed to fix that. and. Uh, and we're going to kind of monitor it, but that's the kind of thing we've encouraged our officers now to seek out and find things like this. Um, for instance, the Crest, a couple buildings down, they have a ledge, and it causes a constant problem with people there. We've reached out before, and now it's hard for us to find uh, the owners and stuff. I'm going to be asking Carrie and her um, staff to help us find who's currently in charge of that, and how can we eliminate some of this? Because that itself, it draws, you know, problems there. We have. You know, like one guy in particular is extremely mentally ill. He confronted me the other day. Um, he's been confronting people here, and he's kind of dangerous. So, um, working on that. Also, um, we got a call from uh, Wolfcom on Sunset. Uh, the owner's very upset. He's got a guy camping out right by his back door. Sent my uh, supervisor out. He's looking. You don't even have. He explained the trespass laws. He said, Do you haven't even posted trespass signs? He was like, you know, wow. And we pointed out Terry Morrison has trespass signs. We got him the signs, and he was very happy and posted them, and we're monitoring that. So that's what we're looking to do across the bids, and uh, we're well on the way to that. Um, meetings attended, you can see my staff and I attended 23 <coughs> meetings. That's with law enforcement, uh, the business community, the outreach community, and that's a very effective tool. We bond with these groups, we share resources, and uh, it really helps us represent your interests. Outreach to the homeless, it's a big part of our problem solving. Um, we're not enablers by any sense. But what we're trying to do is move people from a life of squalor and mental illness into permanent supportive housing. And that's under Carrie's direction. Um, you could call her a leader in, in <coughs> Los Angeles in this. I know she even has a, a fellowship now, so pretty impressive. Um, but she's led us in this path and we're uh, totally committed to it. Uh, a couple examples. Earlier this month, I got a call from Joshua from Washington State. He used to be homeless in the bid. And he called me and said, I'm calling you because your officers were very kind to me when I was there. They encouraged me to seek a new life, which he did. He moved to Washington, got a job. Well, now he's concerned about his friend named Gilbert, who his, Gilbert's mother called him from out of state and said, Gilbert's missing. I'm terrified. Well, we know Gilbert. He's about five foot nine, 412 pounds. He has a lot of medical issues, as you can imagine, including his feet. In fact, we had given him some shoes earlier in the year because they were too small. That was adding to his problem. Well, we just went out and found Gilbert, had him call his very worried mother. He did, <coughs> and Gilbert said, yes, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna go join uh, Joshua by the bus. And sure enough, he did. He's now in Washington State. Good story. Where did Gilbert hang out? I'm just curious. He was, uh, he was here on Whitley or something. And uh, that's the main place I know of, really. And our guys have regular contact with them. Our uh, officers and our unarmed officers that walk around, we talk to these people every day. They build a rapport. And we have very positive relationships with many of these people, which is great. Like that, that way, when we ask them, hey, you, you can't sleep on the sidewalk fast. Business has to open. Many of them go, hey, sorry, and up they go. You know, but, and, but uh, we also deal with the mentally ill and the <coughs> substance abuse who aren't so agreeable. Um, another story on the 15th, we got a call of a man laying on the floor at the Jack in the Box on Sunset. He's crying and in pain. He wouldn't answer our questions. We called paramedics. 
they treated him at the scene. 50 minutes later, we get a call of a man lying on the floor of the McDonald's at Hollywood and Highway. Same man. He's again on the floor, he's not responding, called paramedics. This time they took him to the hospital. Um, this is a good example how these problems move from bid to bid. He's on Sunset in Jack in the Box, laying on the floor. Then he goes to Hollywood and Highland, laying on the floor. Both time, it's inexplicable. This happens all day long. There's, it's just an imaginary boundary that people cross back and forth all the time. Um, the bottom of the page, called to the Starbucks on 6290 Sunset, uh, unable to rouse a man there. He's sleeping. He's got a prescription bottle on the floor next to him. We're fearing an obvious possible overdose. Um, call paramedics and they rush him off to the hospital. Uh, February 2nd, our officer was on foot patrol and they, there's an elderly woman named Marie. She's leaning on the building. She looks like she's in pain. And sure enough, she can't walk and she can't find a place to sit. So she's trapped, kind of just leaning. Um, we happen to have a wheelchair in our office that was donated. And what happens, we have so many interactions with all the outreach providers. People give us things knowing that we can distribute them. The Dolby Theater gives us their lost and found stuff. And so we give them <coughs> stuff for like, my friend's place, things you don't normally get, sunglasses, gloves, scarves, hats that people could use, you know, jewelry, watches to go to a job interview, for instance. So it's not just the t-shirts that we get in the street, but we get cool stuff, we get wheelchairs, you know, so we actually went to the office, got the wheelchair, and even wheeled her to a little restaurant where she got her favorite burger, and so it's great PR too, there's a couple guys working on the street came over, and hey, it was really compassionate, your officers are great. Obviously, everyone doesn't share that opinion of us, but many do. Um, on to enforcement, another role we had in problem solving. Um, so far this year, we've made 32 arrests, and the stats are all broken down here if you're interested to read further. Um, sometimes arrest is another part of our problem solving. It's not our first choice, but sometimes it's the only way to solve the problem. Um, on the top of page five, um, our officers were on patrol in the farmer's market on Sunday morning. An employee approached and said there were three guys inebriated walking through causing trouble. Our officers talked to these guys and they, they left. 20 minutes later, we get a call of a man refusing to leave the yard fight. Well, of course, it's one of these guys. Now he's passed out there. We advise him, he gets up and leaves. And then a short time later, the same guy is now urinating in public at 6320 Sunset. Time to solve the problem. Took him, arrested him for urinating in public. Um, there's a lot of other good arrests, including one here from Hollywood Vine down at the Metro where a uh, gentleman flagged us down. I know it's not in Sunset. So there were five people were beating up the guy. Well, when we get there, it's actually an armed robbery. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> suspects left northbound on Argyle. Um, another team found the uh, suspects. We called LAPD, uh, directed them in. We helped make the arrest of those five suspects. Recovered the uh, victim's backpack and a very realistic fake gun. Um, I'll show you the picture. It's, it looks, looks very real. Um, the su they brought the victim over, he identified all the suspects. And then we had to call the sheriff because it actually happened down in the metro and then it spilled up above. But that could have easily, just as easily gone south into the Sunset Bid. Um, on, on the 6th of February, we arrested Leonardo urinating in public on Vine, 1147. Took him to LAPD and learned he had a no bail felony warrant. That's the common way too. We don't target felonies, but these people are walking around out here, these felons as well, they're mixed in. So, we have to be prepared for whatever. Our approach is, you know, we try to be professional, we try to be positive and, and you know, kind, but we also have to be ready because there's people mixed in. <clears throat> Interesting call on February 18th. We got a call of a man refusing to leave the bathroom at the Denny's, 6100 um, Sunset. These calls to these bathrooms are one of the most dangerous problematic calls we deal with. There's always a problem in bathrooms um, throughout the day. The manager asked this guy to leave. He started screaming and banging a metal pipe against the wall in there. So it needs to say uh, that his manager decided it was better to call us. Uh, we went in, the man was laying on the floor inside the stall. He had a beige substance around his lips and a can of N-Dust, which is a computer keyboard cleaner. Have you seen that? Well, it's also an intoxicant. Um, he kicked our officers, got up, tried to fight. He was rewarded with a two-second spray of pepper spray. Continued fighting, was taken into custody. Um, our officers will pour cold water over his face to wash out the pepper spray, and he's begging our officers to kill him for whatever demons he's fighting. He's just like, just kill me, just kill me. He uh, calmed down, he admitted he ingested a full can of this stuff and a third of another can. Got paramedics there and they rushed him to the hospital. They said he's extremely intoxicated. And he was just a young man. And, uh, you know, 
somebody has to deal with him. He took him in as, as humanely as possible. But he, honestly, he's, he's going to die. In there. Did he ingest the epidemics? Is that what they're thinking? Endus, they call it, I think. But yeah, he, in, in the he ingested the whole plant on a third of it, according to his testimony. And you could see this stuff around his mouth. And the paramedics took one look at him and said, No, he's got to go. And then he rushed him out of there. So the arrest is secondary. We don't care about that. We get him to the hospital and see what happens. Um, <clears throat> late this last month, I was at a homeless outreach meeting right here in this office. And we learned that a longtime troubled homeless woman named Rachel was wanted for robbery. She's mental ill. She's very violent. We've had a years long history with her. Um, in this case, she grabbed an elderly woman's purse, tried to pull it from her, dragged the woman to the ground. She hit her head. And this happened a year ago. And the LAPD told us they couldn't find her. She was missing. Well, while we were in the meeting, I, we know her. We deal with her all the time. I texted my office. They also started looking for her. Within the hour, they found her. Um, we called LAPD and they came in and made the arrest. The consensus at the meeting here was if we could get her in custody and the proper outreach worker would meet in court, we could maybe direct her into services. Sending her to jail serves no purpose other than to get her off the street briefly. In fact, she's been in jail before. If we could get a judge to sentence her to public treatment. Because the public guardian for yeah. yeah. And so that's what happened. We got her there. We called the appropriate outreach worker who was free to do this. We gave him the court date and everything else. And I believe he was there in court. I don't know what happened from that point, but that we've done this time and time again, and we do this in cooperation with the outreach community. It's been an effective tool. We're constantly looking for new tools. We're always expanding our knowledge and, and ways to handle this stuff. Um, our training during this period involved uh, live, live fire night shooting in anticipation of this possible night patrol. Uh, as soon as we heard we might be doing this, we started ramping up our training. We've had a lot of massive defensive tactics training during this period. Um, we had training on illegal dumping, hoping that we can at some point help work on that. And uh, Joe Mariani was also in the class. Um, driver safety, workplace safety, and legal update. Our deployment remained the same, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit of the change of deployment? Is it gonna happen? It's, you know what, I'm coming meeting to meeting to learn. Uh, you know, no. I'm it's just drifting in the waves along with you. I'm waiting to see whatever directions you give me. I'll yeah. do my it's very best to do that. Okay. No change. There's no way uh, the corn is leaving for the No, no. <laughs> we do have a good new captain coming in, so good. I think we're going to be fine. Yeah, I think people, Captain Zarconi has been transferred to 77th Division, back to 77th Division, and Captain Kalka is coming back to Hollywood from 77th Division. Yeah. He was here before and we had a great relationship with him as well. So, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. As usual. Mm -hmm. Impressive. <laughs> great job, my All right, so um, we have here an uh, overview of meeting that we worked a little bit on. Paper. So, thank you for whoever uh, respond. Happy to help us on that. There we go. Alright, so uh, we have security committee, streetscape committee, marketing festival, sense and design, nominating, and then we have uh, David that was willing to help us out, and Drew, that has now been assigned, and we'll see what is the best use for, for, for you guys. So security is the same, no changes. Fred, Fabio, Elizabeth, uh, we add Bill Humphrey. Um, we have Anthony Bella Large, and Leah Clement, who is also new. So we have a very strong security community right now, not morning, 10 o'clock, here. Then we have the streetscape, uh, we have the addition of Adam Tarkovsky. Chase is the um, chair, Arthur, Arthur Daniel, yeah. uh, Key, uh, Carol, and uh, Adam. What is this? Oh, uh, oh. You, you whoever, yeah, we'll be working for the arc lights. Okay, yeah. 
Excuse me, Pacific Theater is on Hollywood Boulevard. Right, I'm sorry. What did it happen? It's the same people who own the Pacific Theater. And oh, is that right? Yeah, okay. Robert's, Robert's yeah. Yeah. Robert's yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Claudio's reached out to them to see if their property manager could join the street yeah. Yeah. committee. Yeah, they will do. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, they have somebody standing on the side of the wall for that. Then we have uh, Marketing Festival Chase, not here. Uh, Brian, not here. Elizabeth and Melissa left. Sunset and Dine, Melissa, Elizabeth is the chair, Brian, Arthur, Fabio, and then we have no changes on the nominating committee, Mike, Polo, Joyce, and Bill Hunter. Um, ex officio, we have Steve Siler. We need two more uh, ex officio uh, members. So I would like to reach out to you and see if you know anybody that would be so the, so the bylaws allow for the president to appoint for one year a non-voting member. Um, uh, you know, in the past, you know, the CRA staff has been on, council staff, uh, uh, Johnny Grant was on it for the Hollywood bid for a couple of years. Um, James Haydu from CLA, the Farmers Market, was appointed by Carol. But never really came yeah, we want somebody here. that, yeah. you know, wants to come. So Captain Zarconi uh, was on Hollywood's, you know, it, it doesn't count toward a quorum, but it can be a community member or a business person or just someone that you think would be good to invite to the meetings and would be here at the table and they're ex officio. So if you have any ideas. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, you know, pass it along, that would be great. Um, I thought it was uh, like a neighborhood council. Or a neighborhood council person? Yeah. Like a neighborhood council. So, any question about this? So, do I have full commitment from everybody? <laughs> and the, the people who haven't been assigned yet, or one of the things we're going to start to ramp up now is starting to talk about the renewal, and that those discussions are going to start this summer. And it's a, an ad hoc group that works between the two bids to make a lot of you know important decisions about beginning to design the new bids. So, um, I kind of recommend it. Drew would be a good person on that because he's had experience with three different bids and, and others in you as well. So uh, if, if you're out of the woods for a while, it won't be so long. Yeah, so this is the life of the day on this new community. They really do a hard work and it shows. Thank you for taking time. Yeah, that's fine. So thank you for being part of it. If you, uh, you're gonna be more committed, just let us know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we can move on to Elizabeth, marketing and communication. Uh, Devin is sick. Devin is out, you've got the, yes. the bug that everybody's been with. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 um, I'm just gonna briefly talk about Sunset and Dine. Um, we have two possible locations. One of them is the LA Film School, and the other one is the Center of the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, and we're also looking at dates. The, the main thought currently was to have it in June, and it's kind of that is tied to the LA Film School location for summer break. But we may, you know, we're still kind of knocking around whether the September date worked really well for us last year, so we're not. We're not final on any, either on the date or the location, and we shall keep you posted. But we are excited about actually about both locations. It would work really well for us. So in the film school, the other one is the uh, the blessed sacrament. Blessed sacrament. Yeah. Um, both, you know, so different, but they would both really work well for us. So we keep you posted. There's not really a lot at this time. Just everything is up in the air. There's a lot we don't yeah. really know yet. Yeah, so. if it is June, it's going to be a bit of a, a gallop to get there, but um, we've done that before, so <laughs> we're not that worried. Are you still <laughs> planning to have it outdoors? Yes. Good. That yes. Is, yeah. 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 I think you're right. It was to have it at uh, the film school, which is great. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a rooftop. Like a rooftop. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see a lot. It's beautiful, but I mean, it's only this week. Just the end of June. Yeah. And June for me, I don't know, I think everybody, when the kids are not in school, a lot of people are not in town. I think it's yeah, September. it's the well, Thursday, right? Very before well for us. Great. Last year, yeah. it was packed, so there's something about September. I would not 
change it, but there's a lot of discussion. Yeah, it also feels it's kind of recent that we just did it and to, to do it again in June, maybe just a little bit. Feels a little bit heavy. Yeah, on, yeah. Uh, but then we don't want to be too close to the to the we go for number five. The music festival. <laughs> <laughs> then we form plans for uh, only in Hollywood, music in a festival. Yeah, so let me kind of just um, something out here. For, October 6th. Right, so that, that date has kind of, we have focused on October. Let me pass this around. Um, this also is a, a little, there's things that are up in the air. I think that's part of the excitement of planning festivals is that, you know, you. <clears throat> you begin to identify um, new partners and new ways to approach uh, this activity. And we've got some exciting things in the work, so let me just kind of give a, a summary. One, we we're focusing on, on October um, as the date, so it's before the daylight savings time you know, kicks out again. And um, we found out that Capitol Records is celebrating their 75th anniversary in October. So, and they're planning a, a, a street concert on Vine Street for the public. Uh, that concert is going to happen toward the end of October, and we don't we don't want to get too close to Halloween. So, what we're toying with is kind of maybe having this notion that October is a celebration of music and arts in Hollywood, and that there'd be a number of things happening in October. So one would be the Capitol Records um, event. Oh. And then Jimmy Kimmel is also, we, we met with their producer about possibly either um, joining with Only in Hollywood as um, a uh, helping to produce it or helping to find sponsors or somehow having a presence. And we're gonna do a walking tour with the Jimmy Kimmel uh, production team to bring them down here to this part of Hollywood to show them different venues where they possibly could bri broadcast live from um, to uh, show a different side of Hollywood and they're 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 interested enough to come down and observe what those possibilities might be but they're also looking to do some kind of a major event for a record release for a group called Lincoln Park which is not oh, yeah. they're very very successful okay there we go yeah. So I must have missed that. <laughs> <laughs> you won't like him. But but, it's but so that's and they're also looking at October. So we got those two things kind of kind of cooking. So um, we also have been in touch now with two other. You know, part of the thing is you know trying to take this to the next level, finding some um, partner that could help us produce this event, start to bring in sponsors. We did this for you know, a pretty um, economical uh, budget last year. I think we spent less than $50,000 total, and you also helped contribute to that. So there's a group called the Wide Angle Group, WAG. Um, their client is IMG, uh, which is a uh, lifestyle, sports, fashion. Um, uh, one of the largest uh, brand, effectively brand, brand agencies in the world. There you go, okay. So they are looking to um, sponsor a beer festival somewhere in a craft beer festival somewhere in LA. And um, uh, we had an initial meeting with them of, about the possibility of working with them so that the, the, the craft beer festival could be in conjunction with the only in Hollywood festival possible, possibly. One of the uh, spaces that we had looked at as a possible place to erect a stage is the um, parking lot behind Urban Outfitters, uh, which is, um, if you combine that with maybe closing down part of Ibar and Selma, would be enough space, in their opinion, to have a combination of music and their, their beer garden thing. So we're, you know, talking with them. And then also um, had some initial discussions with another group called Do LA, who sponsors the um, Echo Park Rising Festival, and they're involved with uh, uh, the Echo, the Echo, the Echoplex, and Satellite. Probably places more than those. Aren't you? She, 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 she left. Which one? The Echo closed down. The Echo. Okay. So um, I guess what I'm saying is that we're we're just kind of like there's like this little momentum building of, of potential collaborative um, arrangements that might help us take this to the next level. 
and um, we're going to get our committee together back here pretty soon to run these new developments by them, which includes Melissa and Elizabeth in particular, who represent the board. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about today, and if you don't feel prepared, we can wait till next month, but this um, little budget, you know, things are still um, a little bit vague about how this thing is gonna, it's either gonna be a replication of what we did last year, which was fine and good, or it might be something a little bit bigger. But I laid out a tentative budget which takes um, funding that would come directly from the HPOA, um, out of the marketing budget, temporary health insurance, so it's $30,000 um, on the left-hand column uh, to fund core expenses, and then aspiring to some um, sponsorship connection. So as you can see, I've plugged in a potential sponsorship from some set and bind of $20,000, um, and then we have created a sponsorship deck. And so we're um, aspiring to raise about $48,000 from additional sponsors. And we rolled over about um, $9,000 from last year. So um, I wanted to pose that today as a possibility for the sunset and Vine bid to come on as a sponsor. Uh, a lot of the activity happens within the sunset bid, certainly along Cahuenga south of Selma with possibly activating the parking lot behind Urban Outfitters and Amoeba, Palladium, LA Film School, uh, uh, Record Parlor are all sunset venues. So it's, it's a great opportunity for the two um, bids to work together. Carrie, um, one of the things I was, as you were going through it, and I'd love to hear the, the it's just an idea, I'd love to hear the board tell us. Um, in conjunction with this, because I think it's a really cool idea, it sort of epitomizes the way we're but I'd, I'd like to see if we can support some of our uh, other constituencies in, in, in our neighborhood, right? Either the, you know, for example, my friend's place, right? And I think that's, you know, it, it's just an example. There's other causes, but, you know, they're part of our culture here, right? And, and like it, don't like it. I personally think they do good things, and, and there's other groups with whom I'm not as familiar as my friend's place, so I'm not singling out to the exclusion of just saying by way of example. So I don't know if this is the appropriate venue to do that, but if you're gonna get really good sponsors, you know, maybe our, those groups are part of the party in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting idea, like bringing my, or like, a nonprofit in to help us. Yeah, let them let them help and let them get some credit. Mm -hmm. Let them. I mean, look, they're part of our they're part of our world. Yeah. Then, you know, marketing. let's a, a rising tide raises all ships, mm -hmm. and I, I'd hate to see that we you know that everything is done to the exclusion of those of, of those call them helping groups. I guess. Right. Well, Sunset and Dying has had a history now of helping um, the center, the Blessed Sacrament, which serves okay. the homeless, and and then that motivates. The, the staff and the board of the center to help sell tickets and yeah get them out make, get, have them, let them have it over in the water make the event a success so yeah I'd be happy to bring this up at our at our meeting about who um, could possibly be a nonprofit partner from the sunset you know jurisdiction to help to help with us or not I mean you may think that the non sequitur and it belongs in a different in a different venue that's fine too Actually, I think there's a yeah <laughs> 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 and we could help bring um, music and other special things. Mm -hmm. We need 7,500 members, we could definitely bring us. And my friend's place, um, the Hollywood board gave 10 grand to them in, in December. I remember. Um, but also, yeah, I hadn't even thought about, gee, can you help us with the heavy lifting here? Because they have a, who's Miley Cyrus? And no? Holy Brian too. Yeah, yeah. Um, is one of their big you know, yeah, supporters. I mean, Brand. What is company? White? My friend's place, which No, no, no. What's that company we're talking about? The promoter? IMG. IMG. I mean, if you can get them on board, that doesn't get any better. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's big 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 yes. and, and, and also, with everything I just shared with you, if any of you have any contacts or even um, acumen in this area, uh, I would love to have you be part of this group because we're we've never done this before we're learning as we go and so um, we <laughs> we definitely would love to have you at the table on our working group 
So what I'm asking, yeah, is if is the board would feel comfortable coming in and sponsor um, out of the marketing budget to uh, help uh, put on this event this year. And that is twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Not a fun deal. <laughs> They're gone. That was planned for funds and marketing, but so, anyway, um, we have forty thousand. We have forty thousand in the I would be. I don't know what the number is, but I would be inclined to support it. But I want to know that we're not the only ducks in the pond, mm -hmm. right? Right. I want to know there's other there's other people out there who are willing to contribute capital. Yeah, we I could mean, make it a we could make I, it a, I, a you know, GPI, GPI would support it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, but I want to see that other people are part of the party. I don't want to other people it. even got a bid or no, no, other 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 sponsors. Other, yeah. other sponsors. So contingent on yeah yeah. Right. So that kind of gives me uh, it's in hand contingent on being able to. Think of it as a matching grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Love a matching yeah. grant. Yeah, yeah. I would call it a matching grant. You yeah. know. That, that gives us a challenge. Yeah. yeah. So now we have an action, but is that still going to happen or will we wait for this uh, matching people? Well, we could no, change the action, or it's, it's a, still the same action, but we add the contingency that it's a challenge. So, all right. So, do we have a mover? And shaker. <laughs> shaker. Kitty. <laughs> sure. So move. Second. Do we have a second? Two. Two. Okay. All right. So we want to continue the discussion, or we want to vote on this. Anybody has a question? All right. So we uh, let's phrase it correct. So I'll allocate a portion of the um, twenty thousand dollars from the Sunset and Vine marketing budget to serve as a sponsor uh, of the festival, uh, serving as a matching grant to incentivize. Um, further sponsorships, so it's not released until we actually can secure $20,000 of additional right. sponsorships. By when? Do you have a date? No, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll, um, doesn't matter. Yeah, wait, I'll keep reporting <laughs> on to, uh, to you at each board meeting. Wonderful. So, uh, so nice thing for dollar for dollar challenge. Yes. Sure. Everybody in favor for this? No. Against, no opposed. Any abstention? No abstention. Good. Are you happy? I'm sorry, you got a time constraint? Can I find me? Yeah. No, yeah. I'm sorry. So Excuse me, uh, I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Night Star Tomasi. Oh, like I said, should we give you the. Yeah, okay, yeah let me more. Just, I'll tee this up. Um, if you would just look in your packet, there is a. It's, a purple. it's a draft of a letter um, that I've written that could come from you to support um, the bond measure that Vice is going to tell you about, um, sponsored by Senate Pro Tem um, Senator De Leon and uh, the Steinberg Institute, and there's also an article from the LA Times about this um, proposal. Okay, thank you for coming here to tell us about it. Of course, if you may just indulge me for a second, can we do a quick introduction? I know a lot of the faces here, but I see a few new faces. If I'm Carol Massey. Yes, Carol. Truth planting GPI. GPI. GPI, we're a local property and we need a building. Oh, okay. Dave Calabrese, CIA member. Elizabeth from Thomas Los Angeles, one second. Frank Rosenthal of Amateur. Joyce Williams, Anderson Collins. Joseph Mariani, you know me. Matthew Severson, I work for the bid. Lauren Lappin. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Lauren Lappin. Steve Seidman. Yeah. Thank you. Keep ready on the line. Fabio Conti at a restaurant in front of the line. Yes. I'm Mike Pogorzelski, I work at the Academy at Fountain and Vine. We met Phil and Phil Humphrey helped me to do that. Yes. Well, um, I'm, as many of you know, I'm Senator DeLeon's um, Deputy District Director, and I've been in this neighborhood in, 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 for about close to 20 years now with Carrie. When Carrie and I started together, when I was with Jackie Goldberg, and then Eric Garcetti, and now Senator DeLeon. And this transformation of this neighborhood is incredible. 
but now we have fallen in hard times again in the neighborhood and with the homeless. We've seen them come out uh, all around our neighborhood and here in Hollywood, and especially we are dealing with uh, an incredible crisis all along the 101 freeway uh, around the off ramp. And you drive through the 101, you've seen it. Uh, not even, they, they don't even stand on the off ramps anymore. They're deep in the woods of the freeways, which is incredibly dangerous. Uh, but I know there's a crisis here, right here in your backyard, right in Hollywood. And we haven't seen the, this kind of a crisis in a long time. This, uh, you know, this was what I remember in the 80s when I first was a little kid here in Hollywood. So I'm to come down here. And um, the city has tried to tackle this homeless issue with the $500 million that uh, Garcetti announced. Uh, but the senator felt this year his uh, priority should be tackling homelessness and tackling it in a um, really realistic manner, which is housing. If you don't house the homeless, you cannot get them off the street. That's the, you know, that's the bottom line. You can provide shelters, you can provide services, but if you can't get them into housing with mental health services, actually housing that includes mental health services, you're not going to get them off of this cycle of homelessness. So um, his big initiative here is called the No Place Like Home Initiative. It's going to be a $2 billion bond um, statewide to construct housing. Um, and we're trying to get support because some, um, some elected officials don't think this is a priority for their neighborhood. We were talking about uh, places like um, along the coast, up in the north and such. And so the senator's trying to get as much support as he can. The big Hollywood is an important part of our district. We want to see your name on this, um, on this initiative as a supporter. We've received support from the Hollywood Chamber, but uh, your fearless leader here, <laughs> Carrie, you know, is the one that carries the water in this neighborhood. And her work with the Hollywood Forward, with Blessed Sacrament, uh, has made a difference in the neighborhood. But we feel that this initiative, um, with, uh, we're calculating with a $2 billion bond, we're looking at 16,000 new affordable units that will be added. Uh, in the market, and the way it will work will, will be where um, this money will be available for nonprofit organizations to apply for and to build housing, and we have great ones right here in Hollywood who can, uh, are, and have the background to do so, like we have the Hollywood Housing Corporation and others that will be eligible for this funding, uh, and we can get a big chunk of it to come right down here to be built to be how to be housed um, and downtown downtown is part of our district and uh, it's a great location to build this housing and to at least get these folks off the street and into into building it's just a, a letter of support we're looking at we, we want to know that hollywood is behind this initiative uh, we want to show the entire state that uh, this is just, this is not a local downtown crisis that we, we have a crisis in our hands throughout um, throughout LA County, LA City, and San Francisco, of course, and uh, other parts of the city. So just um, to kind of uh, set the context, Prop 63, which was passed many years ago, the Mental Health Services Act, right. was the millionaire's tax, basically. So those funds exist kind of in perpetuity. And, um, my understanding is that in the first couple of years of, of the Prop 63 funding, a lot of that money went to things that were kind of focused more on wellness and um, uh, uh, issues that were not addressing chronic homelessness uh, among people suffering from mental illness. So as this says, this is repurposing, repurposing the Prop 63 to, funds. To yeah. really go after a fundamental need in our society. So by bonding against it, it's allowing the state to amass the funds up front and it will be obviously paid off um, from the bonds uh, into the future. So it's not new money. This money has already been approved by the voters, but it's a repurposing for what 
there's a real crisis in our state right now, the lack of, of housing for those with severe mental illness. And we see evidence of that every day right now. Is the money there? Yeah, it's, it's already been approved by the voters probably, I would say, seven or eight years ago. Can I ask a question? This um, does, it does say support successful programs that prevent homelessness or shelter vulnerable families and individuals. It isn't directly addressing the mental um, illness support. In other words, having some of this money being used to try to address those issues, not just the homelessness part of the mental ill, but the mental illness. Well, it doesn't the, seem to be a real an integral part of this, which I think is a huge part of it because, you know, there are a lot of people who uh, impact our businesses and they do have shelters. They are from, I mean, I get peel boxes and all this other stuff, but they literally need somebody to reach out and help them. And well, the, this this program, as you when you apply for the grant, your your housing has to have a mental illness component. You have to have on site uh, folks helping the people in in that. Uh, so mental health component is part. Of it. Okay. So and this is this refers to yeah. Is this the here. letter that came out? This is the mm -hmm. yeah, it's a shortened version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it indicates particularly those who suffer from mental illness. Mm -hmm. And would you like to see also uh, people writing that? Oh, yes, you know, it would be great to get individuals' actual uh, letters, but um, the first letter from the bid would be excellent, and the second letter from the bid. Uh, but if you'd like to send <coughs> separate letters from McDonald's, it would be perfect, or CIM would be perfect. So if, you, if I can so get. Can you do that? <laughs> And I can send it out to as a word document so you can easily um, send it later. Yeah. Because you're going to list all your supporters, right? Yes, yeah, right? yes. We have it on our website, so we've been listing supporters. We want to see other senators and assembly members looking at it and really <coughs> seeing an overwhelming uh, uh, commitment from the, all of the community coming together to really do something about this issue and repurpose these funds to go to housing. As far as it going to housing, is it going the intent strictly permanent supportive housing, or are there other gaps that it could potentially fill? No, we're looking at other gaps potentially being filled, not just permanent supportive housing, affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right of future. Right of future. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I haven't seen um, you in a while. It's I was wondering that lady. Like, <laughs> well, you know, Carrie has the, you know what time she texted me last night? At 10 p.m. So mm -hmm. her and I, we have a line, uh, you know, directly at any time, 24 7. So I know whenever you have issues here with your properties or anything, I'm always here to help. Statewide or citywide, I still have all my connections. I'm more than happy to. Whatever you have, I'm here to help. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.